Okay, I'm going to demonstrate doing a portrait. Um, this is my daughter-in-law. And I'm going to use her arms and, and hands as a better indication of her real skin color um, because she does wear makeup. And I want to have the little bit more pinkiness in her skin than it appears in this particular photo. And so I am starting with a Winsor Newton um, Raw Sienna in a quinacridone coral. And those are the two colors that I have mixed here in a couple of varieties of blends. And I'm also going to use green gold. Now, uh, you know, oranges are kind of, so, you know, the quin coral is sort of between a red and a coral, and a orange. I sort of put it about here in the color map. A true complement to it would be more like a phthalo turquoise, um, which, let me just pull a little of that out so you can see what the phthalo turquoise looks like. I'm gonna use green gold, which has got a lot more yellow in it. Um, so they aren't exact complements. It's not gonna so much be neutralizing the Quinn coral, but it's going to add a little bit of a golden glow to it. Um, and in all of these cases, I'm going to use it quite thin. So when I mix it initially, it's, it's way too much pigment. But if I really get down to extremely wet, I mean, really, you know, I often will use the term tea, but it's really super weak tea in this case because the quinacridone coral, the green gold, um, they're both synthetic paints. Synthetic paints tend to have a lot more vibrance, at least in the Daniel Smith um, line. Um, I see that when I was applying masking fluid to her hair, little bits of the masking fluid flew out here in the background, and I don't really want little dots of white left behind at the end of this painting, so since I noticed them, I'm just gonna get rid of those now. Now, I'm not planning to work on her hair today. My, my goal is to stick with her flesh tones. And all I'm gonna do is, is brighten her up a little bit more than what her makeup does. Um, she tends to uh, mute herself a little bit more, I think, than reality. So I'm gonna start out with some of the Quinn Coral that's been mixed with the, the raw sienna, but it's uh, heavier on the quin coral side. And I like to start around the edges of the face, and I intentionally paint into the hairline because, you know, our scalp continues back uh, into the hair. So I'm just going to wet that and let that kind of bleed out in there to have a little bit of that as an underpainting. And I'm just softening the edges where I added it so that it's kind of a, a soft blend from that color to a more neutral uh, of the white of the paper. Uh, and then I'm going to add in here a little bit of closer to the... Um, It's a blend that's got more of the raw sienna in it, but it's it's not pure raw sienna. So actually, let me grab a little raw sienna too, uh, because her, her forehead, I do want to have it pretty light, not overpowered. I don't want her to feel like I totally ignored her. Her, uh, the paleness that she gives herself with her makeup is just a little bit paler than I think her real skin is and I and I'm and I, my goal is just to bring a little of that liveliness of that pink color into her face 
So you can see I work this fairly quickly. Um, I do want to bring in a little bit of the blend that has the quinacridone coral in here and just have a little of that here and there because it adds a little bit of an extra vibrance into the painting. Now, feeling like I'm losing a little bit of my pinkiness, so I'm just bringing it back in around the edges. Now, I'm going to go right over her. Um, I'm not going to totally cover her eyes, but I'm going to go over part of her eyes because in the long run, the... I just want to go around her nose a little bit there. The nose is going to be a paler color. In fact, I might use just a little bit of the raw sienna here. It's, it's almost all the way back to a white, but there's just a tiniest bit of tint there. And the same with her cheeks. Is <clears throat> the the upper cheeks? You got to remember they're facing upward. There's a, there's a plane on your face that the the cheekbone right below your eye is really parallel to the sky. And I feel like that got a little bit too yellow, so I'm just going to lift a little bit of that back off. Um, so, so, you know, the top of your nose, the bridge of your nose, and the upper part of your cheeks are very light, and you want to make sure you're, you're getting that, because that's where the light reflects off of your face. And then bring the pinkier color. Slightly paler than that, but it, you know, got to remember, you know, watercolor does dry paler. So you don't want it so pale that it's going to totally disappear when you're done. But you don't want it so vibrant, uh, you, you know, you don't want it too vibrant so that it looks clownish, because by no means she's a lovely girl, I don't, you know, I don't want her to look like a clown. Uh, But I do want to have, you know, make sure that as watercolor fades, that we don't lose, you know, the vibrance where we need it. And uh, there's a little bit. So you can see I am going back into wet areas while it's still wet. I'm coming back in with paint that's about equally wet. And I'm just making little adjustments to you know, where I can see, even, you know, even with her makeup, where the little bit pinkier regions are, um, you know, and make sure that there's enough variation there from the lighter area to the darker area. Now, some of that pink that I just put on her, on her cheek, it's, a li it's going in, it's, you know, it's seeping in to the area I put on just before that and uh, making it just uh, a little too pink, a little too far in. So I'm just going to come back and reinforce that other color. Now, you know, we're, we're beginning to go under the curve now. So now we have transitioned from, we were on the plane of the eye uh, that is facing the sun, we go down to the plane that's straight out, and then we're curving down. Uh, so we're curving down under the cheek muscle, and it's, you know, it gets a little darker there because it's in shadow, but it's, it's darker, but it's still, you know, in the flesh tone family. It's not, it's not going to be a blue shadow. Um, frequently, people are taught to go to the blues for shadows. I find that mixing the greens in, which are, you know, complements to the warm colors, is much less harsh and um, a little, you know, and, and, you know, I'm not leaving any of the green showing as green as yet. Uh, and I say as yet because 
uh, you know, let me just put a little tiny bit of green just to see how it looks. Oh, this probably was a little of flesh tone left back in my brush, but just a little bit of green on this side. I'll pull a smidgen more green into my pigment, make sure I'm truly getting the green gold. There we go. And if I put a little bit in this kind of shadowed area on her face, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be add a little extra fun liveliness to the painting. So, you know, in fact, I think I'll put a little bit up here, right near her hairline where we have a little bit of shadow. And her eyes are not green, but I think Putting an initial layer on her eye that's got a little bit of a greeniness to it, it will actually be an interesting thing to, to build on top of. So I'm gonna put a little of the green there too. And um, a little bit more green in the corner of the mouth, because at the corner of the mouth, we have a lot of shadow area. So, you know, it's a good place to kind of play around with a little bit of interesting colors. You know, you don't want to overdo it, um, but it adds an extra little um, zing to your painting when all is said and done. Now, some of that got too dark because this should be very light valued. So I'm going to, I'm not going to change the color. I'm going to leave it being the green, but I'm going to just lift a little bit of that. Uh, right, so, you know, again, right below your mouth, you have a, you know, a muscle there um, that is what helps you move your mouth. And on the underside of that muscle, again, is a little bit of a shadow. So, just grabbing a little tiny bit more of the Clint Coral, and I want to bring that shadow in there. Now, first time that I touched the brush down to add that, the brush was a little bit wetter. That's why I, I reached into the bowl and got a little bit of paint that hadn't been diluted quite so much. Because I want, if this is a little bit thicker paint and not quite so dilute, it won't run into that light area that I just created. And I'm going to use a little of that up here as well on the underside of the muscle under your cheek. Um, and that kind of comes down into the intersection with the corner of the mouth as well. So we've now added the coral on top of that little area that I made greenish. And I'm gonna continue this out to the side for the edge of her cheek as well. And then I'm going to just bring a little bit of a damp brush right above that because I want to blend that so that it's gradating um, where it's transitioning slowly from that color into the lighter color on the top of her cheek. So we've got a little bit of a transition area and a little bit of a darker line on the underside of the shadow. You know, as I created that transition, I lost a little bit of the darker color that I wanted here. And let me just mix, I just want to see this. I'm not 100% sure this is the right answer, but I want to take a little bit thicker amount of the coral and a little bit thicker amount of the green so I have a blend that's a little less dilute and I am gonna go ahead, despite what I just said, and just add a little bit of blue in here because the blue is going to keep it in, it's still gonna be a warm color, but it's just gonna make it a little bit more muted warm color. Because I don't want, again, I don't want her to look like she's a clown, and I want a little bit of a muted look to that shadow. Um, now I just extended the shadow way too far. It only goes up to the corner of her mouth. So there's a lot of, you know, you put some paint on and then you kind of lift it, come right back in and lift a little bit of it off. And 
and put the color in there that you really need. Now, you know, some people can probably be a little bit more spontaneous. I like, I, I want the, I want the face to look realistic. Um, I'm not looking for an extremely stylized, even though I put some green in here for some variety of colors, I don't want the, the final painting to be extremely stylized. I want it to be pretty realistic when I do a portrait. So by adding that little bit of blue in there, I was able to make a little bit more tannish muted color for the shadows coming around the nose. And with a clean brush, so I, I rinse my brush, I dry it as well as I can, and then I'm going to come back one more time to that light area at the top of the cheek and lift that area one more time just to make sure that the new paint I put on that was the shadow area doesn't encroach up there and also to give I want this to be um, a clear transition of color but I don't want it to be a hard like looking like it's a hard line um, where the the under cover where the the cheek goes, you know, down towards the mouth area where, the tr where your skin turns there. I don't want that to be extremely harsh. And uh, so I'm actually coming back, I'm gonna add a smidge and more, and I am using phthalo blue, but I'm just using tiny, tiniest bits of it into that shadow area just to knock it down just a smidgen, oops, that's too much, a little oops, smidgen more than it was. Now I don't want it going blue, which is what I just did. So now I need to kind of move that blue paint up through that shadow area so it doesn't look funky. So there will be a little bit of a blue in the shadow, but not like, you know, some people will just paint the shadow blue, and I want it to be a mix, um, a mix with the warm tone so that it's muted, it's, it's, it's in shadow, but it's not, uh, not offensively blue on the, on the skin tone. I'm coming back now, I'm reinforcing a little bit of the pinkiness on the underside of the cheek which then means as soon as you do that, you gotta come back up and wipe again in the, in the upper area to keep that upper area white or you know as light as you can without too much of the other colors encroaching on it. So I just did the same thing on the other side because I've been focusing a lot on her left side, you know, my right side, but her left side and uh, all right, so before this gets too dry, I want to bring just a little bit of color. So most I'm coming in mostly just with water right now, just to kind of soften that edge, and then bring just a very pale amount of color onto her chin. Again, the chin is pointing, it's got an upper ridge that is going to be hit by the light of the sun so it needs to be very light there to get that sense of how the the muscles are turning otherwise if if you don't do that you don't pay attention to the muscles and how the shadows look um the portrait is just not going to look right um it's going to the face will look quite flat and there's a little bit of the cheek that I missed on my first time through here, so I need to kind of bring that part of the cheek around. And there's also just a little bit more light. I don't know if you have noticed that in um, skin. I don't think you'll become conscious of it until you paint 
but there's a little bit of color that kind of creeps towards the eye. And I, you know, that, I think that's because it's the side plane. And so, you know, it's, it's not catching the light of the sun, like the top of your cheekbone. Um, and so there's this little bit of a, there's a little spot where the warmer color comes up towards your eye, but not all the way to your eye. All right, I'm feeling pretty good about the shape of her face, but I'm a little concerned that there are some spots that do need to be a little warmer and I haven't done them yet. And I don't want it to take so long that I have any hard lines forming on her face. Now there's also a little more shadow. Actually, let me grab a little bit of this uh, turquoise blue that was the compliment. Gonna do a little experiment here. And so instead of getting this tanny color, I'm getting a little bit more of a neutral blend between these two. It's a little bit more towards a, a you know, it's a kind of tannish gray. And there is a lot of shadow on this side of her face, uh, partially created by her hair. Uh, actually, a lot of it is created by her hair. So I want to get that in here. And it is actually a little bit darker than what I'm painting it. So let me um, just get maybe a little bit more of the paint that's not been diluted quite as much. Yeah, that's a little closer to the darkness I need. And I'm gonna bring it actually right up over the hair. Now I've masked the hair to preserve the areas that I wanna be white. And in the photo, it almost looks like it goes to a black. I don't want to go all the way to a black. I do want it to be fairly dark, so I'm kind of going to one of my standard how I can get to a, a nice grayish brown color fairly quickly, and I want to put a little of that into the hair area, so I'm not, I'm, I'm out in the hair, I'm not in her face right now, and that transition that comes from her hair onto her neck, I'm leaving her neck that slightly warmer, kind of tanny brown, you know, and you'll see I am moving fairly quickly, so under her chin, I'm coming in with mostly the quinacridone coral, and I'm letting it blend into this other color. Um, okay, so now we've got this cheek area that I didn't finish, so let's do that. I need a little bit of that slightly darker color coming up onto her face, but I don't want it to encroach too far, so I dry my brush and I wipe that so that it becomes a soft transition there. It really, it kind of cuts across her chin. Let me grab just a smidgen of this. So there is a little bit of a dark area that crawls across her chin and down. So what I'm doing now is I'm just mixing a little bit of this brown and ultramarine blend that I created in with the warmer blend that I, that I made first. And that warmer blend, just as a repeat, was the quinacridone coral with the um, turquoise, the thalo turquoise. And again, I don't want to have a hard line on her skin, so I'm just going to bring some water along that edge just to soften it a bit until I decide exactly what colors I want to bring in. It's pretty light over here in this section, and it's also got a little bit of a yellowy glow to it, so I'm going to grab a smidgen of that paint that I had mixed earlier. That was the combination of the Quin Coral with the Green Gold. It's got that little bit of an extra glow in it, a little 
a golden glow. And I'm going to put that in this area. And then clean my brush, wipe it pretty dry, and just bring my, br my wet brush over that area. And it's going to let the colors that I was using here blend into the color that I had brought down there, which was a much more pinky. It was, a, it was one of these blends of the Quin Coral with the raw sienna that I started with. So I'll reinforce that. I just reinforced it with paint that was not as wet as the paint that I just put down. And then on our faces, so we've got the harsh lines under our cheeks, and then we've also got lines at the edge of the muscles around the mouth and the, and the lower part of the cheek muscles. And I don't want that to be too emphasized. It's, it isn't in her face, but there is a little bit of that there. So I'm gonna bring that down initially with this green gold and, and um, I grabbed the, the, I think I grabbed a stronger amount of the green gold with the clean coral, but I wouldn't swear to that. I got talking too much and I forgot what I had picked up. And now I'm coming in with just a damp brush and, and smoothing that transition so that, again, I don't want hard, hard edges on faces. That's my style of painting faces. Now, I intentionally left this very light because this is very light on her face. And when you paint faces, you gotta pay attention to, there is a part of the painting, or a part of the face, and it's right here on Greta, where the face and the transition into the neck, they're all the same color, the same value. And it comes, that other color comes down around her chin. Now I don't want to bring it too far over uh, and, and ruin the shadow that I brought there, but there is a little bit of rosiness that comes back right below her, I guess it's right below her Adam. Well, let's see, whoops, that's the wrong spot. Uh, yeah, there's a little uh, right below the chin and then a little bit that kind of comes down around where the Adam's apple is. Now on women, the Adam's apple doesn't stand out very much, but it's there and it does have a little shadow under it and it's the pinky color. Now, the chin itself, I've left very white, because you do want there to be a distinction between the face and the neck. The chin is where that shows, but interestingly, there is just a little very pale pink comes up right at the bottom, but it's paler than the colors below. So I was just using a super gentle touch just to put a little bit of that color in there. It's trying to stay above the neck to make it separate from the neck. I'm gonna grab a little bit stronger of the Quin Coral to put under here just to accentuate that separation. And because they're both wet, I need to, you know, just really monitor this and make sure there's not too much bleeding going on. The, the upper part of the chin that's facing upward, you gotta keep, you know, close to, you know, the lightest color on the face, just like the, uh, the cheeks were, uh, had to be kept very light. And right around her mouth right now, I have not, uh, I've not re-come back in and tinted this differently. I wanted that green paint to dry a little bit. And I think it's probably dry enough now that I'm gonna grab a little more of the Quin Coral. When I'm mis mixing here, I'm, there's still enough of the uh, Ross, 
sienna uh, on my palette that I'm, I really am mixing a little bit of that in here. And what I want to do now that this area has dried a little bit, oops, hold on, let me get a different brush because this one I've got loaded up with paint now. That brush was totally dry and I guess totally dry is not going to do what I need. I just gotta, I'm just trying to make sure I don't have any water blossoms happening where I've been coming back in here and adding more paint. And as it um, comes down, now you'll notice that I did leave a hard line here. Um, I've debated this multiple times looking at this photo. I am not sure if, I think, I don't know that this is all her skin coming all down here. I think there is a a very thin gauzy fabric that's over the upper part of her chest. Um, and so, although I don't want this to be a hard line, and I do need to remember to also soften this a little bit. And when I say soften, at the when I'm at the edge of a transition area, I like to come in with just enough water to kind of loosen that up and you know spread it out a little bit so that it's when I come back in later to add some more paint in that area it'll it'll be a smooth transition I'm doing it a little bit late but I, I think I caught it in time all right so now let's come back to this area right below her mouth so um, right around the lips is the lightest area. Then it, it, there's a little bit of a shadow just before you hit the point where the chin juts out. So right here, I need a little shadow. And this may not be quite dark enough yet. I, I'd rather sneak up to it than um, come in too dark right away. And there's a little bit over here. I know I did once, but I'm going to reinforce. And right over the lip on the edges, because the upper lip, you got to remember that upper lip is also curving under there. And right below the nose, the shadow of the nose is also adding some color. So a little bit of shadow but in between those two areas and they kind of bled together as I was doing that it needs to be very light again so now I'm coming in with a wet brush and I've got too much off but I need to have just a small amount there and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the area I just lifted out dry a little bit more and then I will come back in and uh, fix that up. So I'm going to leave that area again. I'm going to come back down to this area just below the mouth so, and put a little bit more color in these areas. Right at the transition at the edge of the mouth. There's a little shadow under the lip. And, uh, there's not too much shadow on the other side. So now again clean the brush dry it um, as much as you can on a paper towel or on a, on a regular towel like i have on my painting surface and then lift again and so you're making a nice soft transition between the shadow area and the lip area you want the shadow under the lip and you want the shadow just before you hit the chin area but you do not want the shadow in between that is a, a light area and you really can lift a lot out with your brushes it's a gentle touch you don't want to be doing it you want to be applying a huge amount of pressure uh, and it, your brush needs to be just barely damp so that you're not lifting out too much paint I still have that little corner shape correct and uh, okay so now 
this has started to dry a little more, so I'm going to try to be a little bit more accurate about the shadow under the nose. They're really not big shadows under Greta's nose. Um, there's always a little bit of shadow. There's this little area right below our nose where we have the little indent in our... Uh, I, I'm sure there's a name for that. I don't know what the name is. And there's always at least one side of that that is, gets a little bit more shadow than the other. So it appears to be on her right side, on my left of where I'm painting. And these areas that I made a little darker earlier, I want to add a little bit of rosiness back into those. So I'm just using a little bit of the Quin Coral, um, muted slightly with um, the raw sienna. You don't have to wait a long time to come back in and make some color corrections. And I'm still going to need to make this corner of her mouth just a little darker, which <clears throat> I'm going to try first adding in a little bit of this um, turquoise thalo that I mentioned was the complement. Rather than going the green route, I'm going to I'm going to try this route. I want it to be in that little sh corner there of the mouse where you get a little bit more shadow and actually bring it a little bit into her mouth because the, our teeth in the corners are also in shadow and so you need to get a little shadow into there. And in fact, I'm going to grab a little bit of the color I used on the neck and in the hair earlier. To just bring a little bit more into the teeth in the very corner. And then even though, uh, you know, there's, so right on the underside of her lip, because our lips, you know, she has a fairly thin upper lip, but there's still a shadow that's created by that. And so you need to actually get that shadow in there too. You, you know, when you're painting uh, teeth areas, you really got to be careful about where those shadows are. All right, so she is wearing lipstick and so I'm blending a couple of different a little bit more ready colors in with the Quin Coral to try to get a little bit of the lip color in here. And that mostly is on the very, very thin edge above the shadow. It's a little bit more prominent on the other side of the lip. There isn't as much shadow there. And, you know, I bring it over that dark shadow that I just brought in here because you want to have a little bit of that sense of the lipstick down there, uh, up on there as well. Just a little bit of the curve of her lip. There we go. That's important detail, so you want to make sure you get that. And I'm going to go right ahead and bring some of this color onto her lower lip as well. Now I'm painting onto the under edge of the lower lip because that is the darkest area. And I know that what I've got in my brush is about as dark as the lipstick gets. And then again, clean the brush, dry it a fair amount, and then just wet the upper part of the lower lip just tiniest bit of water in there and the paint will just kind of automatically flow into that wet area and you end up with a paler version um, of the uh, lips the lipstick color down there I still feel like I have failed on that shape of her lip I think it was slightly off-center there 
All right, and as much as we don't usually think about this, the color of the gum line, when you're smiling largely, there's a little of that coming through. And you don't really want to paint the teeth. So I'm going to take an extremely pale blue. This, this seems very wrong. But it is really pale, and you almost won't even see the color here. And I'm just hitting her teeth to just tint it the slightest amount off of the color of the paper. With the tiniest bit of a blue color. Which actually end up making the teeth look whiter. It's kind of interesting how that works. I guess it's the blue next to the pink. I'm not sure. And when I drew the teeth in, I did with my pencil put extremely light lines where the teeth separations are. And I don't think I need to alter that. So I'm going to let that be sufficient to show where the teeth separation is without really painting her teeth. Now, one area that I did not paint yet is um, the tip of her nose. The tip of our nose, again, is curving under, so it's in shadow. And so the upper part of the nose is very light. And I, I do see a part here where I need to remove some of that shadow paint because it's on top of her nose. But the under part of the nose does have a little bit of a pinky color to it because it's in the shadow. So, you know, we don't want her to look like a clown. We don't want it to be too pink. So, you know, I put it on. It's just like everything else. I put it on and then I pull some of that color out into some of the areas where I know there are creases in our nose and there's little tiny bits of shadow there. So let me fix the shape of her nostril first. All right, and then I'm gonna just pull tiniest bit, it may not be enough. But I'm trying to make sure her nose is not too pink. And, I, but I do want to have these shadows that are along the bridge, be, or the, the junction between the bridge of your nose and the top of your nostril. There's just a tiniest bit of shadow there, but it's a flesh tone shadow. And then I'm going to also put a little bit of shadow. I'm not seeing it in the photo but I know there's got to be a little bit of shadow along the, uh, the side of the nose. And, you know, so you, you got to actually, you know, sometimes you may not see stuff in your photo, but you know that, there, you know, the nose, again, you've got the bridge of the nose, it's being lit, and then the sides of the nose are not lit. And so they're, they are going to be just the tiniest bit darker. And the same, you know, when you as you come up to the eyebrow area, there's lots of curved under areas, and um, and all of it is under the brow ridge. So I put some pinky colors in there, but I'm going to also come back with some um, blends of probably the. Um, I think I'm seeing the turquoise blend in the in her left eye above her left eye it seems to be a little bit more in shadow here so I'm going to put a little of that uh, it was a little too much so I wet my brush again and dried it and it comes kind of up to her eyebrow it does come down so, you know, we have a little shape there where the tear duct is, and that's always also a little bit in shadow. So I'm gonna pull a little bit of that color down into there. And then there's a little bit of shadow under 
So our lower eyelid, you know, is, you know, sitting down, you know, when our eyes are open and that the tooth casts a little bit of a shadow. Now we, you know, we don't want her to look like an old woman, like she's got creases or anything, but we do need to have a little tiny bit of a shadow there. And now I can come back in with a little bit more warmth into this area of her eye. So there's the shadow side and there's this part where it's a little bit more lit as it comes towards the edge of the face. So as long as, you know, as you're painting faces, if you continue to think about what's happening, you know, it, it, where are the planes of the face that are facing upward and where are the planes of the face that are facing downward, you know, and make sure that anything that curves under has got a little bit of a shadow and it can be, it can range from just staying with the pinky colors or having a little bit of other colors blended in. And I'm, I'm gonna grab a smidgen of that turquoise one spot above that eye where I see a little bit more shadow. And it tends to be, the shadow's gonna tend to be in the, you know, we've got our eye socket, up, you know, that, that's just below the eyebrow and, and that's, you know, in shadow. And so we tend to have a little bit of shadow in those areas and that's what gives us form to our faces. So, you know, you can't leave the shadows out. Uh, Often I'll see paintings where the shadows have been omitted and it, you know, it just doesn't look right. So again, I'm also putting just the tiniest bit of this turquoise phthalo under that area of the, the lower lid area and uh, a little bit in the corner of the eye because now this corner of her eye is, is coming out into her hair, but I'm still gonna put it in there. And you don't really need to paint eyelashes. And even if the person, you know, you know wears makeup and they, you know, they're gonna have darker eyelashes than the color of their hair, you don't really, you don't really want to paint those in. Now you can maybe put a little tiny bit of a texture in, a, in one little area to kind of indicate where those eyelashes are. And you know, I know she also uses eyeliner. When the eye is a little bit drier, I'll come in and put a little of that. But so I'm, I'm putting a little hint of eyelashes on the outer part of her eye when this is all Dry. I'll put on a little more of her makeup. This, actually, this side doesn't feel too bad. So she does have some eyeliner. And it comes right right down there. And she has some on the underside as well. So I'm going to put a little of that in, but I want to be gentle about it. I'd rather add some more later than get go too far because a lot of the eyeliner we're not going to see you know necessarily from the angle we're looking at so, all right so let me put a little bit of an eyebrow in here now her hair is um it's kind of a lovely, um, blondy, rosy, I don't even know how to describe it, color. The makeup on her eyebrows is a little bit darker than that. It's a little bit more like the sh colors of her hair and the shade. So I got to make sure I get it. Just a little bit darker than what the hair is going to be. 
So I'm, I'm just coming, you know, I'm coming back in, picking up a tiny bit of ultramarine, because I know when I add the ultramarine on top of this brownie color, it's going to add a little bit of darkness. And, you know, what's kind of interesting is on the other side where you can see more light on her eyebrow, it's, it's really pretty light on this side. And then as it gets into the shade, I need to you know, pick up a little bit of that ultramarine. And as I keep going, I'll need more and more of the ultramarine. Now I keep bringing it over here so I blend it in with the uh, quinacridone burnt orange that I have over there that I've been mixing with. So it's not going to be blue eyebrows, you know, we don't want to have blue eyebrows, at least not in this kind of a painting. I have certainly seen paintings with blue eyebrows and and they're a lot of fun and, you know, I even on occasion will do that. I will paint someone's a uh, little bit different color than their really are. My favorite paintings, in fact, are that way. But, um, all right, now, so, you know, we're, we're not going to be doing, I kind of like this color, and I feel like I still don't have these corners of her mouth quite right. There's always a little bit more of a shadow, and getting those shadows right is, I find, a little on the tricky side. So you don't want it so dark that it looks crazy, but you don't want it so light that it's not convincing. You know, it's not, there's just, just a balance. So I think I got a little bit too dark right in that spot. This I need to blend out. But I think in that area, I got pretty darn close to what I needed. All right. <clears throat> now, I'm going to move on to her eyes. And, you know, it's quite hard to see what the color of her eyes are in this photo. Um, I think they're more brownish eyes, but they're so much in shadow that I'm, I'm still debating what I should use here. So I'm going to start... mostly with the quinacridone burnt orange. And you know, I've made it pretty dilute, so I'm so I'm touching my uh, tablecloth here. And what I'm doing initially is I'm just bringing little dots into her eyes because if you really pay attention to our to you, the iris there's really a lot of different, um, you know, it, it's it's very granular in a sense. It's um, because, you know, as your pupil opens and closes, you know, your iris moves. And so your iris is, I don't know exactly how it's formed, but it's it's got a lot of little interesting textural look to it. So it takes a while to build up an eye well, I think, but so the, for this first thing, you know, so I had a little green, started with a little green under there, and now I've brought a little burnt or, uh, orange in there, and it seems to be actually standing out slightly better on the right eye than on the left, so I'm going to bring a little more of that in on this eye, which course now makes that one a little darker so I'll bring a little more in and the other thing to remember is the top of our iris is getting a shadow so there's it's all about shadows it's getting shadow from the eyelashes 
So the top of the eye is always going to be a little bit darker and a little bit in shadow. Now, you may recall when I um, when I painted the color of the skin, I let the, the, the paint flow right over the eye because the whites of our eyes don't really look white um, unless somebody's shining a light in our eyes or something. So, and I missed that corner. That corner was still a little bit too white. So I just put a little bit of that turquoise, phthalo turquoise on there. And I'm gonna do the same on this side. And the reason I'm picking the, the phthalo turquoise is I want it to be different from the iris and the iris is going to go to the browns. The other side still, it does appear to be in shadow. So I, I, I do have a little bit of a shadow um, effect in the corners already. It was on the outer parts of the eye where I was missing it. Um, there's a lot of masking on her hair. We talk about that while the paint is drying a smidge. Um, I, I'm masking all of the areas. She has very curly hair and all of the, of the curls that are being lit up by the sun. I, I masked those, you know, I started out kind of trying to get the primary shapes that I was seeing in there. And then I thought, you know, I just need to keep going over it. Um, I was started out using this masking fluid that dries kind of goldeny in color. And then it started clogging up on me and I didn't like how it was going on. So I switched to a masking fluid that happens to be tinted blue. And the reason that they're tinted is so that you know where you've put the masking fluid. You know, if, if they were clear, you would have a much harder time seeing where did I leave the white of the paper and where did I leave, where did I actually apply the masking fluid. Um, so that's why you're seeing all these blue and yellow colors over here. This has not been painted, with the exception of where I pulled some of the skin color out here and a little bit of the skin color out into this area. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm back now looking while this other stuff is drying. I'm back. I've, I've grabbed a little bit more of the Quinn Coral again. I want to Maybe I'll grab in a little bit more of a fresher of the um, fresher amount of the um, Windsor Newton raw sienna. Um, and I feel like, you know, I'm looking back down here again and I'm feeling like, you know, this area of the chin and the part that comes under her neck wasn't quite warm enough. And that's partly how we form the chin line. So I'm just gonna reinforce that a little bit from what it had faded to. And now again, I've, I've wet my brush, dried it on my towel and uh, just kind of easing it out so it's a gradual transition there. I think that's gonna help a lot and I think um, her cheeks have also didn't end up quite as rosy as I want them to be so I'm gonna come back in and reinforce these a little bit and you know still avoiding going to the a clown look we don't want clown so, uh, you know, put it on and then wet, just damp brush and kind of blending it out while leaving that uh, white on the top of the cheeks. Over here, I need to blend it out towards the front. Okay. I think that's better now. The eyes feel pretty dry. So now I'm going to mix the ultramarine in with the quinacridone burnt orange. I, 
the, you know, the first color, you know, if you got a little bit more of the burnt orange than the, um, than the ultramarine, you're going to get some really nice browns. So I'm going to add now some browns to her eyes. And again, I'm not applying it as a, I'm kind of putting little dots of it into her eyes. I will probably come back and uh, wet some of that. Now I'm not consciously, uh, I, on this side I did not paint, uh, paint in a pupil yet, and I will come back and do that. I'm just trying to get now the iris portion done. And I'm also leaving a little um, reflection area because, you know, when there's photos taken. I'm dabbing just a little bit of water into some of this so that there's a little bit wetter areas than others, and that'll just make the brown uh, variations a little bit more gradual. And I can't say that there's a rhyme or reason of um, exactly how I'm doing that. Um, what I still need to do is I'm going to bring in the pupil. In order to get the black for the pupil, I'm just going to add more um, ultramarine into the brown until it's um, a blackish color. Because of the eye makeup, I do want to put a little bit of that dark color where I know there's liner. And then and right in the center, but it's gonna be it's gonna be running under the eyelid, so we're not gonna draw a perfect circle here. We're just gonna put a little dot that kind of runs up into that upper lid. So I'll do it to do the dot first here on this side and then I'll bring a liner that's on the upper lid which is also um, you know I'll put a couple tiny dots to represent a little bit of eyelash but you don't want to get you don't want to do very much of that that's um, extremely distracting if it's not done well so just enough so people don't feel like they have no eyelashes at all, but not so much that it's a, an issue to your painting. <clears throat> and what I'm struggling with is she also has the eyeliner under her eye, and so I feel like I don't want to draw a solid line under there, but maybe a few little dashes of the, on the lower lid area. Just to get the sense of the eyeliner without drawing, you know, harsh line all the way across the bottom. It looks correct on our faces, but it looks weird in a painting. All right. Now, until I do her hair, I'm not going to know if I want to have more addressments on her face. You know, in terms of color and, you know, do I have enough... Um, on her face. That's the danger of going from black paint into back into flesh. I felt like um, that shape, I, when I put that little shadow line on earlier, was a little bit too thick. Now there is also a tiny hint of pink right above the nose. And, you know, it's not consistent for everyone. Everyone's a little bit different, but I do see that there on, on her. So add that in there. And, you know, the hair is so much, you know, her beautiful curly hair is so much of the personality of Greta. 
uh, that until I see the hair on the face, I'm gonna have a hard time deciding, do I have the face right? I, I honestly think that I have put this eye smidgen too far to the left, so I'm actually gonna try to lift a little bit of this brown off. brown coming to this side because I feel like one eye is looking straight at me and the other one was looking off and uh, I, that's, I think that's my error. That is not how it looks in the photo. So First I just kind of fit in exactly where I thought the edge of that eye was going to be and then I put little dots of color into it and I feel like both eyes are looking in the same area. Now, the, the, the reality is that there's such poor light lighting on her eyes that um, it makes it hard to see exactly where she's looking but I know that there's a little bit need a little tiny bright in that co corner as well. And when I did that, I of course removed a little bit of the eye iris as well, so. But I needed to get that light area back. Again, so that we could see where she was looking and uh, I think I've got that closer. I'm not sure. I think my uh, irises are not exactly the same size at this point. So I'm going to bring this one just a tad larger. And often I will just measure with, you know, I, I'll look at my paintbrush and kind of put my finger on where I think it's going. And, uh, yeah, I've got them close now. They're pretty much the same size, I think. All right. Um, as I said, you know, there, there might be slightly more touch-ups I want to do if I decide, you know, like this, this um, little shadow around the nose. Was it? 100% the right shape. And on the other side, it's slightly pinkier. I think the sun is coming from over here, so there's a little more shadow on this side and a little more light, uh, you know, pinker shadows on the other side. And I do want to bring that shadow just a smidgen out. and warm this up just a smidgen too. It's, it is grayed, but it's not quite as grayed as the way I put it in here. And uh, again, I wanna press the paper towel to lighten that. So, you know, I got it wet, I got it soft, but then it wasn't quite lifting out, so. these little little bits in the chin that is just a little here and a little there that are kind of the same color as under the neck um, but I don't I are leaving little gaps up from the very bottom of the chin so that this part is just the tiniest bit darker and I think if I bring a little tiny bit of this uh, turquoise thalo in just a couple of spots. That'll help 
keep that chin separation going there. Uh, one spot here on her cheek where it was supposed to be a little bit lighter coming down in that spot. So I would have I lightened that up. I'm really torn on this shadow because it is it is darker in the image on the painting. Um, and the photo, but I don't want it getting too dark. And what we're running into here is there is a, a piece of hair that's actually running. It looks like it's running into her eye, but I think the masking fluid went just a little too far, so I want to lift that one little spot. I can bring some skin tone in here. All right, and uh, that's as far as I'm going to go in the demo. I hope the explanations make it a little easier for you to kind of understand the thought process when you're doing a painting. And um, of course, you know, as every time I look away, I think, "Ooh, that that little bit of brown shouldn't be quite that brown right there." So there's, you know, there, when you're doing a portrait and you want it to really look like the person, there are, there's, there's a fair amount of coming in and gently removing a little paint and adding a little paint and pushing back and forth. Uh, and once I have her hair done, then I'll probably want to do a little bit more of that pushing and pulling. Now, there is a a small amount of pink that does crawl up onto their cheek, even though that's in the light. It's just a tiny pink spot right there. And another one that comes down. And this is common. I've, I've seen this a lot. Right under the eye, there's like a little bridge area and I don't mean the bridge of the nose. I just mean there's there's a transition between the eye and the nose that tends to have just a little bit more color in it. And it has nothing to do with makeup. I mean, it's it's that way whether people are wearing makeup or not. And you know, so, you know, as you do more portraits, you become aware of, you know, these repeating patterns of where you're seeing color. And, uh, you know, kind of sparking that up a little bit here. Um, just to make, you know, add a little bit more personality to the painting. Okay, now that I've done all of that, let me put a little more color there. Clean it off and then kind of transition it out so that it's dissipating into the whiter area. Okay. That's it for today. Uh, no, maybe not, maybe not. One more. Uh, this area of right below her mouth. It's 
just a little bit more color also. That's better. 